This show took a turn. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It did. Um, yes. Um, uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> thing like i i, I kind of like i expected like this flavor mm-hmm. i guess is the word mm-hmm. to use i didn't expect all the details because now like yeah when season three shows up i don't know who the fuck i'm actually gonna root for because everybody's terrible I, this is the thing like lou and i watched this pretty shortly after it aired and we've just been waiting for you guys to catch up and now that you have i'm so happy and so hey, ready to uh, talk about things so uh hunter you know how david's been the good guy for yeah. two seasons yeah yeah um mm. no what well nope. well no we'll, we'll get not. to that because like we'll... that kind of like i spoilers i have not finished season two yet but uh Legion, like the character Legion from the comic books, is he's not a good dude. Uh, honestly, uh, the finale of this season felt like the, like the realization of what that character is from what you've told me. Yeah, he's like the concept of like a like Legion seemed to click. Yep, he's not, he's not a completely good dude. He just. Very mentally ill. Well, no, we're we're, we're not. Sk- well, we've we've skirted past like. Well, he's not completely vile, or he's not completely good. Like, no, he's kind of a piece of shit now. No, no, no. I, you're completely. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Definitely. They lean into that in this episode yeah. a lot. Well, in yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, I mean, so I'm Connor McGraw. This is our Legion season two wrap up. I'm also very uh, tired. <laughs> <laughs> so this episode might be a little weird. Uh, Probably. Arlen Haro here as usual. Uh, Hunter Downport here. I'm Alan Muir, and I will not be talking about that awesome open to the finale. Uh, I'm Eric Fedorchek. Uh, I'm going to talk all about that goddamn awesome opening from the finale, because holy shit, I need that song on my phone. Yeah. 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 I, they said they're releasing the album, and I can't fucking wait. Oh, wait, wait. <laughs> I'm, gonna buy, I'm gonna be buying that shit. Well, before before we get too lost in the weeds about things that we like, do we just do we want to just briefly go over episode nine and ten? Because I mean, it sounds like the meat of what we really want to talk about is Harry episode fights eleven. The <laughs> yeah, well, nine and nine, nine and ten are a lot of setup. Harry, um, Harry fights an actual Minotaur. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's pretty great. Was it's, everyone, it's was, was, was that everyone upset it. that there were women in the show? <laughs> oh, oh my god! <laughs> wow! Wow! Get burn. <laughs> uh, you know, this is not a news episode, but I just read a headline from the dude who's directing Ghost Protocol, or uh, what, what's the one we're on now? Rogue Nation. Uh, Rogue oh Nation. yeah, Rogue. Yeah. No, he never. was like, oh, Fallout. Wait, Fallout. He was like, yes. Fallout, yeah. 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 I'm not directing a Superman movie or a Star Wars movie now because you fans are terrible. <laughs> he doesn't yeah. want to because these I, people mm. that, are, that are opening their mouths are pieces of shit. I well, love based, well, great. based on the gift that that one person shared. It looks like he's going to be directing a werewolf movie next. I mean, I'm, I'm into that. I'm okay with this. Well, do you know? I support you know what I'm this decision. About, no, what? what, what are we... Somebody posted a GIF showing um, when Henry Cavill does that little like uh, shimmy with his arms. As oh, he uh, steps forward, beer? all of a sudden he has like five o'clock shadow that he didn't have when he was standing in the light. <laughs> oh damn! <laughs> yeah. 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 Like only two people can spontaneously grow beards, and that's Henry Cavill and Chris Evans. I'm convinced every time they finish a movie, he goes, "Hold on," <laughs> grows his beard. <laughs> no, it's like the Santa Claus. He stopped shaving. <laughs> and then <laughs> he killed the previous Chris Evans to become the new Chris Evans. <laughs> um, but uh, I actually, real quick about the Star Wars thing. Um, quite frankly, I think the best punishment for these these inane troglodytes is to not make Episode Nine and to not make any more Star Wars movies ever again. Or <laughs> we let them mm-hmm. we let them remake Episode Eight. Yeah. <laughs> and what is totally not a scam. And I'm sure. Well, no. First of all, I after knowing that the uh, the, the SJW cut of Last Jedi actually came out and is available to see on the internet, yeah, and right. after hearing how appallingly unwatchable it is, because it's just a hack job of removing women. That's it. 
That's all it is. Mm-hmm. Um, I, uh, I, I can't wait for them to do this remake because once it's out, people will go, oh, you're all a bunch of morons. Well, yeah. the thing I mean, that yeah. I'm saying that now. The thing I'd read was that, uh, you know how they're claiming they have all this money that people are donating to their cause and for the movie? There was mm-hmm. someone who, I believe it was a tweet I'd seen someone shared, that they're not really keeping track of who you are promising this money or how much you're actually going to be able to pay. One guy had this tweet had said, like, these idiots don't know what they're doing. I promised them $40,000 and I plan to give them none of it. <laughs> yeah. Have so, anyone let's... seen the tweet where it's? So, so it, it, I'm pretty sure it's a Twitter one. It's a Twitter reply or some tweet about it, saying how how stupid they are for make use using make your taking all this money to remake a movie, movie rather than don't like charities or anything oh yeah frank oz yeah yeah frank yeah. oz was like he named like s- like 17 different things that could be done with this metaphorical amount of money that mm-hmm. they're just not mm-hmm. gonna do like they're like like yeah. i don't know world hunger women's rights like child mm-hmm. abuse kidnappings rape yep. victims child hospitals no. something anything mm-hmm. worthwhile people people ruin their star wars so they've got to remake it right oh you ruined the space wizards oh, exactly. you ruined it. oh. Yeah. I really and most of us don't have sensible oh. reasons hold for on. why we didn't like it hold on i gotta wipe my tears with my fedora oh. <laughs> oh. My, my boogers are in my stupid facial hair. And my giant Dragon Ball Z Hawaiian shirt. Yeah, that I haven't watched since the eighth grade. <laughs> I'm sorry, but like I, I was among you people as a child, and now I want to push you off a fucking cliff. <laughs> By the way, I'm running on like three hours of sleep, and I'm especially embittered. So um, no, no, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna train, jump on this train. Personally, I hope every other civil war. I hope every one of you who is feeling this way about these movies i hope you all spontaneously burst into flames and right. i hope your dog but first man i hope your dog that you have pisses on your ashes afterwards and then eats. i don't care about <laughs> first though subscribe to our channel yes. and then burst yeah. into flames. <laughs> You're in the same... congratulations star wars fans i feel the same way about you that i feel about nazis how mm-hmm. does that make you feel well you know what don't answer that question i couldn't give a shit about your opinions Anyway, <laughs> Legion Season 2 is awesome, unlike yes. these fucking basement-dwelling, mother-loving fucking Star Wars fans. <laughs> we all need to shower and get a haircut. Oh just get a haircut, people. <laughs> Come on. Go, just, go take just... a bath, talk to some women, do something. Yeah. Don't, right. They can't, they can't, do no, they can't, just they can't talk, talk to, to people women. that aren't on the internet. They just can't talk about no, real life. They can't, they can't be seen approaching the female, uh, the, 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 the female gender because, or any, any, honestly, female, male, whatever, it, it type, yeah. tree, whatever you particularly want to fuck. Um, <laughs> uh, they can't be seen speaking to any of these things because it would ruin the idea that they're involuntary celibates. <sighs> Yeah. God damn it. They can't oh, risk showing any kind of social fucks. tact. Anyway, yeah. this is <laughs> This is very off track from what we're here to discuss. This is some this is some built up aggression I've had. But anyways. <laughs> anyway, hi. I love Legion season two. It's fantastic. And it's yeah, over I now. I wasn't sure if it was gonna be able to surpass season one, but this these last couple episodes just I, completely blew it out of the water. I do I do like I did kinda like read a little bit because i was like oh my god legion season two i can't watch it but i must know mm-hmm. uh this show got fucking bonkers mm-hmm. yeah it did well yeah just our last episode when we were talking about the tree computer that they downloaded a man's consciousness into yeah. <laughs> like who is, who is, there who's conspicuously absent these last two episodes yeah 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 they just left that dangling for you to go oh, wait what about he's in the computer I, I don't know if they had a place to put him, I guess, maybe. Well, I mean, this so... whole, like, the back half of the season is devoted to rearranging all the chess pieces we were familiarized with anyway. Mm-hmm. Because, like, they, they didn't just they didn't just move the pieces, they flipped the board over and said, yeah, go ahead, try to find where they belong now. 
Well, it's more that they flipped it over and said, now we're playing checkers. Like, and just, <laughs> but still just, gave you chess pieces. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it just, it, it did such a good job of selling you this idea that, okay, we're going to this. Oh, boy, there's going to be this thing happening. Oh, oh, that's not really what this was all about the whole time, was it? Like, they gave you hints of what they were trying to get to at the end of the season, but they never blatantly let you know, which I Well, mean, is... also, they, um... They told us what this season was going to be uh, mm -hmm. in the first episode. Yeah, they did. Not even in the first episode, in the commercials, um, yeah. in the previews. Like, that preview of everybody's face, like, shifting and, like, oh. blending or whatever. And, like, there was a, there is an ad where uh, Lenny, uh, Arby Plaza, is telling you, like, listen, David is a liar, and oh, nothing yeah. he tells you is yeah. true. Everything mm -hmm. he tells you is a lie, and you cannot trust him. But see, that's, yeah. that's the thing. Like, how much of that is actually manipulation by the Shadow King? I mean, don't get me wrong. There are things that David obviously yeah. did that were questionable at the very best. Mm -hmm. But a lot of what happens in these last few episodes is a master manipulator who knows he's not going to be able to beat this guy just based on his raw power, so he's going to use every piece on the board that he can against him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, all of the best laid plans of Mice and Men are basically destroyed by Farouk's superior right. mind. Yeah. I don't know. I, see, I think... <clears throat> so, once David started talking to versions of himself, mm -hmm. and it wasn't just emergency situations and i realized oh that's that's i'm pretty sure that's low level schizophrenia right there oh yeah, yeah. i'm being generous uh so maybe maybe they aren't wrong I, that's, uh, and that's what i think is the genius of these last couple episodes is it makes you seriously question it like you're you're mm -hmm. as unsure as everyone else is that's in the cast that that like wait david is supposed to be the Good. What's yeah, and the thing on? is, David is so sure of himself that he is the hero of the story that he goes and does things that are that are unquestionably immoral, mm -hmm. um, and then writes them off as like, no, it's it's the right thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean the big one that we're we're dancing around. Holy which, shit! Yeah, which me I that mean, fucking movie. <laughs> like, do we do we like I said? Do we just want to hit up some of what happened in episode nine and ten before we I'm just sorry, I was, yeah, episode eleven? Yeah. I was very distracted by um the. Uh, poster that Arlen just put in the chat. <laughs> it's so good. Uh, yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, 9 and 10, yeah. 9 is very Melanie-focused. Um, mm -hmm. And it's... And it's... I don't know, it was a very interesting episode to watch. Um, because I didn't feel like they were setting up Melanie to turn, <laughs> but it was it was interesting. It felt right, I guess, when it did happen. Um, yeah. Oddly, I think. I, I will admit, though, like, what is it? Like, episode nine, like, and I'm supposed to all of a sudden care this much about Melanie when she's been in the background pretty much the last mm -hmm. eight episodes. I did find that to be a little bit of a hurdle to jump over. I just, I I was like, all right, she serves a bigger part to this story that they're telling, but as a character, I just haven't really cared about her that much this season because she hasn't really mm -hmm. been present other than the one episode that you were in her mind and they introduced the Minotaur. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I mean, is what else is there really to talk about for episode nine other than it's it's about Melanie and explaining yeah. how she got to the point she's at? Where I think this is the point where Farouk took her over, obviously, like mm -hmm. or showing that obviously he had gotten into her much earlier than people realized. Yeah, and like mm -hmm. Farouk had a yeah. fucking trump card the whole time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, it really just sets a lot of groundwork for what's gonna happen. Like it's it's just a lot of like, well, this is the pieces moving into place. Um, I thought it was really well directed. Yeah. Um, it was real gorgeous. Uh, I thought the that car setting itself on fire was a really cool thing. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I thought the teleportation was cool. I thought the yeah. So yeah, I don't know. Yeah, the teleportation was... of of Lenny was totally repo man. Like, that mm -hmm. was totally an homage to Repo Man, because I don't know any of you have seen that movie before. No. I know of okay. it. I okay. Okay. Um, at, at Best Buy. 
<laughs> uh, it's it, at the very end of the movie. There's a point where the one car that uh, shit. What's his face who finds Bruce Banner in, in uh, Avengers? The uh, janitor, uh, the actor. Oh, who's been in oh, fuck. Todd David he's, also, he's also yeah. in David Twin Peaks. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Ah, um, he's he's a guy who's been working with Emilio Estevez as a Repo Man. He, and... just, he just passed away last year too, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's also in one of David Lynch's more more crazy as hard as it is to believe films. Um, the what is it? The long story, the one where guys riding a he was lawn also tractor. An alien. Yeah, he was. Yes, he's yeah, an alien. Yeah, he Everyone was. knows about that one though. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, um, at the end of the movie, there's a point where a car that they're trying to repossess because of something that's inside of it starts glowing green and flies off, per, uh, presumably into outer space. And it was very similar to the way that the car teleported in this episode. Uh, oh. Harry Dean Stanton is the Thank name. you, thank you. Yeah. yeah tip of yeah. my tongue. He's been in but fucking everything. Hasn't Pretty much. Harry Dean Stanton been in like Law and Order, episodes of Law and Order? Um, Probably. Do you want me to list that? Me. Okay. The Godfather 2, Alien, Escape from New York, Christine, Repo Man, Pretty in Pink, The Last Temptation of Christ, Green Mile, Alpha Dog, Inland Empire, Lucky, Twin Peaks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's, he's, <laughs> That's a little it. bit... You name it, he's probably been in it in one way or another. At he least also associated fought in with it. World War Two. What? <laughs> yeah, apparently he was the Battle of Okinawa. Jesus Christ! He was, born, he he was born in 1926. Jesus. And fucking Harry Dean Stanton's running at you with like a gun. <laughs> he's like, oh fuck it. I just imagine he looked the same at all stages in his life. He just always kind of looked like yeah, that grandpa. Like a very, that... like a very, t- like a, like a very, uh, like a tender crypt keeper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he's he's like two steps away from being day drunk at all times. <laughs> he's got a really cool. Uh, he's got a cool uh, character uh, in. Se- well, it's the same character from Twin Peaks, but in season three, he has a very especially interesting character. Nice. <laughs> But yeah, so uh, season nine, or episode nine was basically the Melanie episode. Season nine? Oh my god. Season, oh god, no. <laughs> episode nine was basically just the Melanie episode. <laughs> and, the, the, I, this show cannot exist for nine seasons. No. No, I, I don't see how. I'm uh, kind of hoping season four would be possibly the last one. Based I, was, on... I was hoping five. Okay, okay. Well, we yeah, can, we can yeah. get to that when we get to the, the season or episode 11. Um, I can see five and then maybe a spinoff of some sort because why not? Um... Yeah, or I mean, in a movie. <laughs> damn it, Al. Uh, yeah, I could see that too. I don't know. I'm I'm thinking more. This is Noah Hawley. I could see him doing another show in the same world because he knows how to do that already. So he can easily do something else in the X Men. I I I want to see Noah Hawley's like uncompromised X Men universe. I want Noah Hawley yeah. to make like a really obscure X Men character, like Noah Hawley's maggot. <laughs> <laughs> Noah Hawley presents Stripe. <laughs> God, oh God. <laughs> Noah Hawley would like just cover him in tinfoil though, and just make you take it dead seriously. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Ink, yeah, he would. Is, totally. Ink, is the character Ink too high profile now after Days of Future Past? Who's right. Ink? Who? What? If I have to ask, then Fuck. no. Fucking what? who? If I have to ask, I'm like, obviously. Wait, what'd he's you not say, Al? Ink. Ink. Ink? Wait. The tattoo. Whoa. What was he in Days of Future's Past? I love that movie. Well, I don't know who the hell you're talking about. Ink, Ink, like, has tattoos that, like, come to life, right? Wait, the, he's the, the asshole tattoo? in the barracks that makes the dude vomit? Yes. Yeah. Wow, okay. He's not high profile. Yeah. No, no, he's actually no. very overpowered. <laughs> okay, but, no, the most... okay, but no one knows it. That's like saying like the people knew who the fuck what's his nuts from X Men three, he could grow spikes. That's like saying right. people know Marrow. who the hell are. Was that Marrow? Right. That wasn't Marrow. Well Marrow's was Marrow's a woman, so yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. Marrow Marrow's a Marvel vs. Cacon too. You better shut your mouth when you talk about her. <laughs> hey, I got no problem with God her. Damn it. Like, shut your fucking mouth. I got no problem with her. Fucking no, I, I don't think Ink is high profile. Um <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Uh, that was Lou. Lou told me about that character. I'm recording no. a small little chronicle, so Okay. Uh um, <laughs> a little bit so, of, like away from the here. 
Uh, so yeah. episode 10 was the one that opened up with him with the uh, full on legion from the comic care, correct? And a pregnant yes. Lenny laying in front of him. All right, this was something mm-hmm. that uh, Lou had mentioned in a note he had left me, which uh, if Lenny's pregnant, does that mean it's David's? And if it's David's, does that mean he had sex with his adopted sister? Yeah. Uh, that's by Lenny. Uh, <laughs> okay, let's be honest. Let's be honest. That's like bottom of the barrel weird for this show. No, but it's still <laughs> really cre- not, it's still it's, gross. It's, not, it's, yeah. not, it's like, honestly not that strange. I had to sit there and look at like I'm still not over the mustachioed fembots. Okay. <laughs> and the fact that I've just gotten used and, to them at this point. And the fact that their boss wears a fucking basket on his head. It's so good. I no, love it he, so much. He needed some place to have those TVs. You know, it's like, very important. Yeah, a nice viewing well, angle. He's, just, he's doing him. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so yeah, episode ten. I mean, it's that's the one where he tortures the hell out of uh, Oliver. Oliver. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it also shows them obviously bringing in all the different stuff, and you find out what the different pieces that he has in play were going to be like the mm-hmm. well, with the exception of the uh, sniper rifle, but the giant tuning fork that turns off people's powers, and so on and so forth. I forgot yeah. that this hair thing happened, and I went to go back and look at a picture of it, and holy fuck, it's so good. Yeah. It, yeah. I did see I did see a picture of that, and that is pretty accurate. Yeah, I was so happy when I saw that. Like, and if I remember correctly, minus the uh, Lenny lying on the floor pregnant, like, that might have been something taken from a cup sleeping on it. Like, I'm not 100% sure, but it, it definitely looked... Been. It looked very much like a Marvel Comics cover where you have someone who's a villain holding an orb, and that's that's a pretty common trope within most comic covers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and his, his collar's all up and everything. It's just... Yep. It's so good. It's yeah. so... Yeah. <laughs> it's just a red vest. Uh, yeah. 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 And a lot I, to love there. Didn't I say in the last recording, I said, hey, do you guys think we'll get a fucking uh, Legion hair homage? And I think everyone said no. <laughs> well, I think I actually yeah. forgot about that part when we were, when you mentioned it. Either that or maybe it was in the first three episodes. But um, yeah, this what else was happening in this episode? This is the one where uh, you also have Farouk in Melanie's body basically trying to turn Sid against David. Mm-hmm. Yeah which yeah. was ridiculously effective because you do see how much of a sociopath he kind of is. A very effective. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, that was, that was, yeah, that was really, really well done. Um, and I love that the Minotaur gets a buff. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was, that, that was fun. Um, little, little Minotaur gets his uh, arms back. Yeah, well, and, we, uh, we finally get to see the Minotaur in all his glory instead of just kind mm-hmm. of creepily crawling around in background scenes. It's so good. Yeah. <laughs> Although they never really explained what it's supposed to be other than it's a minotaur. Or is it just a manifestation of... I think it's just a manifestation. Like a... Yeah, like Farouk can just like create things out of nothing, I guess. That makes sense. Uh, Farouk is like the world's most powerful psych... Like, like, so yeah, right. I mean, I, like if, well, yeah, I mean, you know what I mean. Like, he's one of the, like, one of the strongest psychics in the world. So it doesn't, like, surprise me he can manifest things like that yeah mm-hmm. yeah well i mean yeah. like by the end of the season like david's power set is mm-hmm. kind of insane yeah he, he's insanely overpowered well and that's that's yeah. kind of what's happened all of the season is by farouk being this this villain that's on a similar power level to david he's kind of forced david to actually show all of these abilities he has like, it's mm-hmm. something, because all the first season, like you had said, Arlen, he was just the uh, audience surrogate, so you didn't really get to see him using his powers at full potential. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But this yeah. is true. Yeah. This is... Yeah. It goes, uh, uh, also, yeah, this episode dropped, goes interesting, actually. They dropped the word Omega, uh, like, mm-hmm. in regards to rank. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Oh, omega level. Nice. Yeah. yeah. He describes himself as an Omega level mutant. Huh. Mm-hmm. Just like Iceman. There's some deep, like <laughs> geek stuff, like some deep X Men cuts that they throw out there, just Dude, randomly. I really, I really am enjoying the deep X Men cuts that have been going on in my life lately. <laughs> Between this and Deadpool, man. What? You're not a fan of uh, uh, Dokken getting a symbiote suit? 
you're not a fan of uh, you're not a fan of, uh, <sighs> of of two of two comic book weddings being just fucking terrible. Uh, Let's be honest. By the way, by the way, different different companies, same exact outcome. Please tell uh, me how that's a thing. Right. Jesus it's almost Christ. like they're the same company. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's also one, one, but a wedding have to actually happen in the other issue. Uh, mm. it's it, not really. <laughs> I, wedding quotation marks. Yeah, yeah, not really. One started to happen, and then yeah. Anyway, yeah. Um, um, I honestly, I didn't think Legion would go in the direction of like giving anybody X Men goodies because it kind of seemed to steer so far away from comic book aesthetics. Uh, like right at the gate. Yeah. Well, I mean, it always did throw in like little stuff, but like. Like once an episode though, but like these last I mean, three, it's like hell. It it took until what like the seventh or eighth episode of the first season to even like show a representation of Professor X outside of seeing right. a wheelchair, like or the wheel of a wheelchair mm-hmm. with an X on it, and yeah. even that was just a chalk drawing of him. Well, I mean, he did get like little. You got little in references to things. You know, the fact that Farouk was the Shadow King mm-hmm. was pretty it was out there pretty early um people figured it out at least yeah uh just by calling him king that's true um so like but uh this season is just packed with it like mm-hmm. to the gills with stuff uh, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's just like so so much uh yeah well, that's that's the thing i'm i'm still trying to wrap my head around is how could they have justified episode 10 being the final episode of the season like there is no possible way they could have ended the season with what they did in episode 10 yeah i think originally they were one episode that's yeah. that's oh, my answer to that okay okay i think i think that they were shot as one episode and intended to be one episode and it just went long okay. I, I think i think that they just shot too much and they were like we can't cut some of this. Some yeah. of the, <laughs> we can. We have a whole another episode here. And FX being FX was like, all right, okay. <laughs> we'll do it. Uh, do that's it. my answer to that. No, that makes a lot yeah. of sense. So I have a question. Uh, hmm. Did they explain like why Farouk is kind of just like this being that enters from body to body? Like they they don't say his tracks. I know that, but do they? Well, no. His body was uh, separated during the battle. I thought. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if they if mm-hmm. they, they didn't. They just came out and said it. No, they they, well, they, they insinuated they, they, they it. Don't you see? You see Xavier in the reflection of Farouk's glasses at some point, and like, yeah, like second that's... or third episode, something oh, yeah. ridiculous like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. They it's like most things in the show. They never <clears throat> give you a this direct is... answer. This is simultaneously the most like close. <laughs> like playing it really close to the chest and also just getting real weird with it mm-hmm. yeah yeah well it's kind yeah. of the perfect character to do so weirder. with <laughs> so outside of david torturing oliver and then discovering that the shadow king wasn't really in him but he still enjoyed torturing him anyways like uh which that entire scene was horrific and i still don't understand why mm-hmm. oliver didn't say anything while he was torturing him but because they never really made that clear why Oliver felt the need to be completely quiet about it. Right. I think he said something about Farouk made me, but I don't, I, I don't really remember hmm. that well. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 But yeah. All right. So let's just jump into episode 11 because that's what we're all kind of. Like uh, so this is the fucking. This is, yeah. 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 Um, because I was, I was watching it and I was like, okay, can we get moving? Because there was nothing happening in mm-hmm. episode 10. So mm-hmm. episode 11 is when... That's when all the fun stuff happens. Holy yeah. shit. That, that opening to episode 11. Holy, Holy shit. shit. Hunter, I can't wait for you to get to this episode. This episode <laughs> opens with David floating over a big giant valley, singing Behind Blue Eyes. Um, like what? An, updated, an updated cover of it, by the way. Yeah. Um, by Noah Hawley, by and Noah the person Hawley. who does the score. A full um, legion, and then like on the end, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, I love this and, show already. Um, and, and then, then... across across the field, Farouk is coming at him. I think he's singing the lyrics in a different language. He's singing. It he's singing French. it in Farsi. Oh, no, yeah, it's Farsi. Farsi. Oh, I thought it was. Yeah, French. it's Farsi. 
Oh, wow. Yeah. And then, well, like, that, they yeah. basically meet, and then they start singing the song together whilst having a massive psychic battle involving, like, re green and red animated versions of themselves that, like, jump into the clouds and take various forms to try to fuck each other up. It's basically yep. the best version of real life anime you'll ever see, or live action anime. Okay, like, I'm... like, like one, like Davy becomes a T Rex and just like eats Farouk, and then Farouk turns into a snake and starts strangling the T Rex. Yeah, oh, it's... so good. I gotta go. I gotta finish this. <laughs> well, he was... turns into a squid, and God, it's so good. That, that was uh... into a spider. Yeah, yeah, and he starts yep. wrapping up David. Um, that was something Lou and I were talking about. Uh, after we recorded the episode or uh, the episode about episodes uh, six, seven, and eight, um, the ar the actor who plays Farouk it actually can speak three languages other than English, mm -hmm. and he he learned he learned to speak. I think it's either Farsi or French for the show. Damn, isn't that yeah. the guy from Wonder Woman? Uh, which, might be which guy from Wonder the Woman? sniper? I thought he was. Yeah, the sniper. Yeah. No, he's not the sniper. I mean. I don't think so. I don't think he's saw the someone sniper. that he was in the show. Uh, mm, he maybe he was at some point, but I I'm pretty sure he's not. Don't oh quote yeah, me on no, that. he's not. No, I don't think he is. I I can see that guy in my head right now. So no, I don't think it's him. But uh, regardless, yeah. So uh, David's getting wrapped up by the spider version of Farouk, and that's when Lenny comes in with the uh, the mystical sniper rifle and shoots one of the tongs. I thought it was on the uh, mm -hmm. on the uh, yeah. The... Basically, it's like this tuning the tuning fork that it negates like its powers. Frequency negates mutant powers. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and so it knocks both David and Farouk out of this this duel they're in. Uh, so David goes fuck it and picks up a rock and starts beating Farouk, which is ridiculously biblical. Like him yeah. grabbing a rock to try and destroy the person that's similar to him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, and being named David? No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, real convenient. Yeah. Um and then Sid shows up with the head of the Minotaur, a very real head of the Minotaur. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Drops it and like basically just tells David, like, you lying piece of shit. Like <laughs> she just totally turns on him. Um, yeah. and, and he's like, and excuse me? Is it before yeah. or after this that we got the time jump? Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah. Um, I think the, hmm, it's huh. after this, but then it goes right back. Yeah. Um, because, no, wait, hold on. Is it? No, it's, it's after this, like, because we get the logo and then we get, uh, oh, fucking right. Oliver and, uh, Shit. Uh, Oliver and Melanie Oliver, are in the after yeah. plane together, and it's three years later. And they basically mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah, life's fantastic. Like, we don't know oh, where our yeah. bodies are, but they're safe. Um, yeah. Like, we're having a fantastic time. Everything's much more romantic here. Um, and they're like, oh, yeah, so sad what happened to Sid. Yeah, we like Sid. It's too bad about the trail. And they're just being really vague. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they're, they kind of go into David and Farouk real fast. And they're like, oh, yeah. And then David tried to destroy the planet. Well, but not even that, though. They're like, and then David, what happened to David? I don't, uh, I can't remember. I'm having a hard time remembering. It's like, I believe they said something along those lines. Like, the idea that mm -hmm. they've just kind of purposely forgotten anything yeah. that went on with. They also flash, yeah. say, like, hey, the world ended. Like, yeah. it happened. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Well, they, well, they say, they, yeah. they say the world ended. They're like, well, the world ended. I mean, not really. You know, everybody's okay, but the world ended. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, so Sid shows up and is is basically telling David all the things that. Now, this is the point that I'm I'm really curious. Did Farouk plant this in her mind, like more so than um... just having Melanie controlled by Farouk implanted in her, but like actual psychic suggestion, or is this something she came to on her own? I think she came to it on her own. Um, hmm. I think the lies probably and the continued sort of not telling the whole truth probably did it. Um, and I think she really believed that Farouk went to the future, probably. Um, well, yeah. that, that was something uh, that Lou had brought up in one of his notes was uh, the big problem in a story with time travel and knowing the future was David always going to turn? Did Farouk as Melanie turning Sid make David turn? And he yeah. went on to say Farouk, he believes, had looked in the future Sid's mind. 
to I'm, see. Well, the other thing yeah. is, like, in, in depending on what your fiction is, like, are the events of the future set in stone and can they be changed? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I'm thinking right now. Yeah. What, well, what I was waiting for was the moment where one of them travels back to the future and we realize that it's not actually Sid. Mm -hmm. Um that's what I was kind of expecting because I didn't think Holly would commit to evil David. <laughs> I yeah. never thought that he would, but after he did, I was like, Oh, now that said, yeah. the option that she may not actually be Sid is still out there. That mm -hmm. hasn't been undone. That can still be a thing. Um, so I wouldn't be shocked if it was revealed that she's not actually Sid, that she's maybe a Farouk vision or something. Um, but that would that would complicate things that. because of the episode where they had the conversation and mm -hmm. she was obviously bothered by him being there, you know, when he made the mental yeah. construct of a car filled with pink goo. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I loved it so much. <laughs> well, I mean, you could, you could, I mean, you can support that by saying, well, She's uncomfortable because if anybody would know that it's a fake, it would be Farouk. Yeah. He would recognize his own handiwork. Um, but yeah, no, I, I get what you mean. But any any of the many different... Well, you I, know, it's, hold on. It's like, the X-Men verse. I'm, I'm almost positive at some point someone also asked future Sid, like, hey, are you my Sid? And she goes, no. Yeah. Yeah. She's, no, she you're, you're right. blatantly says, like, no, I'm not that Sid. You're right. Um... Yeah. I thought she was like maybe an AI or something like that, or a cyborg, or some kind of yeah. like artificial recreation of Sid. Although, yeah, you know, I, looking I, looking at what happened, her saying "No, I'm not your Sid" is kind of apt, actually, based mm -hmm. on the events of what happens at the end of this episode or um, in this episode. So yeah, then we have, I really go ahead. So uh, Sid shoots David. Um, mm -hmm. Tries to. Tries to. Tries to, yes. Yeah. Then we are yes. we are launched into David's head, and this is where like the fucking curtain gets pulled all the way the fuck back. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and this is where I get we have multiple Davids convening with each other, yeah. right? It's showing that he does have some sort of psychosis. <laughs> yeah, yeah oh, totally. That's yeah. Fairly clear. Well, I mean, uh, the big thing is that Lenny shoots the bullet that. Sid shot at him or David and she gets knocked down and then that's when David has his whole psychic whatnot or yeah. not psychic psychotic break because yeah. he's in, he's in yeah. what, he's in his old he's in his room from when he's a kid yeah right? mm -hmm. yeah he's, he's in, in his mind palace and um, his memory palace yeah and like another David is with him and they're watching the TV and the TV is just saying like uh what is it a delusion starts as uh what is it Ugh, fuck something one of the john ham skits yeah it's like a delusion starts as an egg mm -hmm. and it's just like it's just that same line over and over and over again with that creepy fucking spiderling shit <laughs> hatching out of it spider bird yeah um, spider chick and then like one of the davids is like yeah everything you've been thinking about is kind of not true and david real david david prime is like no i'm the good guy i'm the hero and mm -hmm. the other david is like are you yeah <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and this egg hatches, and inside he shows you bits from season one. And it's when Sid comes down the stairs to David for the first time, and mm -hmm. other David is like, that's it. That's where your delusion started. Well, this and is where it all starts. I thought it was, I thought it was also David in his uh, asylum get up and just saying, you know, I deserve to be loved. I deserve that, to be loved. That too, yes. I deserve yeah. to be loved. I'm a good person, and I deserve mm -hmm. to be loved. Saying that over and over and over again, convincing himself that's true. Yeah. 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 He he's not he's like David is like he's never he's he's psychotic. Like he's not Yeah. And I think the cool thing about this show is like it kind of plays with the fact that maybe he's not psychotic, but at the end of the day he's fucking crazy. Like yep. well, and it's it's also it goes further into the idea that, you know, everything we're seeing is completely unreliable narrator. Because, I mean, yeah. ostensibly, David yep. is our narrator for the show. So how much of what we've been seeing actually happened the way it happened and how much of it is just the way David interpreted it happening? Mm. Yeah, because the, the, the implication of showing Sid uh, from, like, season one was that, like, he was falling in love, but the reality was, like, she wasn't even looking at him. Mm. Yeah. Like, he kind of created this moment in his head. Hmm. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. It's it's interesting. Um yeah. 
Yeah, it's it's and it it does. I mean, it it makes you look back at the rest of the season uh, quite differently, and you wonder, well, maybe zombified David was the best <laughs> was the best David. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Like maybe that was the best option because at the end of that episode, it really leads you to think that putting him in the asylum was maybe the best idea. Um, but no, maybe not. No. Maybe, m- perhaps not. And maybe him being one with Farouk is the best idea. <laughs> because uh, my, my favorite David, old rich David, uh, he's uh, he's doing well and he's not killing anybody. He's not no, no, he's, hurting he's, anyone. He's, he's corporate evil. It's fine. He's not going mm-hmm. to kill anybody. Well, beyond that, his his powers are focused on something. They're not, yeah, they're yeah. not just kind of wildly out there and causing harm to everyone around him. They can be focused on one person in particular at a time. Mm-hmm. While he's busy boning down on everything and anything that wants to, yes, <laughs> yes, anything that will let him, mm-hmm. and things that won't let him, probably. But not. we only see the things that will, like uh, like Connor so... said earlier, like kites. God yeah, damn it, kites are trees and shovels. <laughs> I don't look. I don't. I don't care. I don't. I don't care what's between your legs and what you want to fuck. I don't care. <laughs> that is my life philosophy. You want to. You want to go to a doctor and turn yourself into a stapler? Have fun. <laughs> Uh, y'all fuck a cake. Go ahead, man. Yeah, do, do it up. I don't care. Except well, um, this, except there... Sonic fans. I'm judging you. Oh, God damn it! I was gonna say there's this anthropomorphic creature with red shoes and blue fur that yeah, I really no, want to fuck. I... <laughs> Look, if you wanna if you wanna stick your nuts into a pencil sharpener, I don't care. If um, you wanna if you wanna fuck that up. I, well, you know, I, I care a little. You bit, just had to. I yeah. care a little, bit and I'll get over it. However, like, yeah, no, you. Sonic fans, you don't get yeah. it. I'm sorry. No, Pennywise mm-hmm. fans, on the other. Uh, God fucking damn you. <laughs> Any nope. Nope. nope, they get a pass, too. <laughs> um, yeah, so we, we come back to uh, David on the battlefield with uh, Farouk beat the fuck up. And Sid... David's still hitting with a rock. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, who is it? Who is it comes over? Was it and says, like, you think that's enough? Uh, mm. Carrie, isn't it? Was it? I think so. Maybe? I think somebody says, "Do you think that's enough?" Well, I think yeah. it's I think Sid. It's Sid. Oh, it's Sid yeah. oh, oh, yeah, it is. Sid. Yeah. It's before she. All right, it's before all the the shooting and whatnot happens. Yeah, because um... like, I think we didn't go into too much detail with like what she said. She's like everything. She's like you know. She's like you kept so much from me, and mm-hmm. I basically told like, no, you are not a good person. Like you're pretty vile. Yeah. And mm-hmm. he's like, he's like, no, I'm I'm your man. You love me. I love you. And she's like, no. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But then after, but... after like they get knocked down, um, and David has this kind of moment in his head with his other selves, uh, he kind of denies the idea that it's a delusion, yeah. and in his denial, like sneaks up to Sid, and like mm-hmm. brain roofies her. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And, and, mm-hmm. and changes her memories to the, to make her still love him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, where everything gets really creepy and invasive, mm-hmm. where you have double, where it's like, uh-huh. is David sympathetic? No, oh. nope, no. The, the, there's a very there's a big turn in here where it's like, I don't know if I like David as a person or I, not. It, it's this is this is one of those things that like what he does is terrible, and I just I. I don't know how much of it is the Shadow King's manipulations and how much of it is David as a person. Like, um, I mean, all of it has to be his own delusion, right? Yeah. I mean, you can blame you can blame Shadow King for creating him, mm-hmm. but past a certain point, well, past a certain point, thing, Frankenstein's monster is making his own choices. Yep. And yeah. Sid, and um, Sid, Sid yeah. also says it. Sid said the son of Sam had a dog that gave him commands, but every time he gave a command, Sam still pulled the trigger. Mm-hmm. Such a yep. good example, too. Good point. Because that guy was a liar, but whatever. Yeah, well, so no, but he's he's born again now, so he's good. Right. Uh, yeah, he's a he's a he's a reformed man now, as uh-huh. we all know. Uh-huh. Wait, who? <sighs> the son of Sam. Sam. He's yeah, super David Christian now. Yeah. David Berkowitz is super Christian. Yeah, he, he was born like... again while he was in prison. Mm-hmm. Well, he was in prison. Jewish, too. Still in prison? Yeah, as far as I know, he's still in prison. 
I say, yeah, he's still, they're not going to let him out. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> like, I don't care how reformed he gets. Yeah. He's going to be there no. for a long it time. It does not matter. No. No. I, understand, I understand that prison is supposed to be a rehabilitation like system to get you back out into the, the functioning world. But some people yeah, <laughs> don't belong in the real world. Yeah. Right. Such Charles, as David Char- Berkowitz. Charles Manson told us this every time he was up for parole and came up with a new swastika carved into his forehead. They're like, yep. oh, well, <laughs> clearly you don't want to go out there. And talking about how he wants to kill a billion people and he yeah. loves life and the world and trees. He, yeah. he's, he's like, mm-hmm. basically like, don't let me out. Yeah, like David Berkowitz, even if he had no use of his legs, he would get like a one of those carts or whatever, and he'd go around and he'd do it again. Like, yep. I, you know, it's not to, not to go to, totally off the beaten path, but like on the polar opposite side of that. There's somebody who is a very explosive and violent person who is in prison, who I believe actually needs to be released so he can go live a quiet life in a farm somewhere in the middle of England, and that's Bronson. Charles Bronson. Yes. yes. Yep. Or, uh, oh, fuck, what's his real name? Michael. He needs to go, he needs to go live on a farm and, like, beat up bears. Shit. No. <laughs> he, he, well, first of all, he's, like, he's doing, like, 25 to life for, like, an armed robbery where no one was hurt. And, yeah. like, mm-hmm. I don't think he even got away with anything. Problem is, every like, the the movie makes it seem like he's just a completely unbalanced, aggressive psychopath. Um, and I think right. he likes, uh, from what I understand, he likes the movie. Or at least I could mm-hmm. be wrong there. Of course he does. The movie also takes lots of liberties. Uh, but, like, he, in interviews, like, he's like, just let me go live by myself, like, in the middle of nowhere, and I'll just go die quietly. Like, I'm yeah. not going to do anything. Right. I think a lot of his behavior was a result of being put in these like shithole prison systems where he's just being like tortured like an animal. And he's like, "All right, you want to treat me like an animal? I will fight you like an animal." Yeah, and he's he's proven he's much better at that than they expected. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like when when the queen has to be like, "Get him off TV." Yeah, yeah. I, I do love how like you ever see that interview where like he's like, "Yeah, Tom Hardy's a bit of a ponce." <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's such a fucking character. Uh, but uh, so back to creepy David and mind wiping Sid. Um, the thing that makes what he did ten times worse is then he astral projects and has sex with her while she seems like she's not really too sure if she wants to or not. Uh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. There's he even gives that like he's she's like I'm going to bed. He's like I'll come with you. She's like No, no, no. You have your own room tonight. Like I need to go get some sleep. Mm-hmm. And he completely yep. ignores that red flag and does it anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it... yeah, yeah. And then the, the mouse from the multiple universe episodes. That in my was, head, it's the same mouse. That was that was something we forgot to mention. Is when they come to uh, collect the Shadow King and whatnot. I thought it was pretty great that the mind dampening device they used looked like a crown. Like I thought yeah. that was really yeah. apropos. Oh, I love. It I also love looked like the crown that David had in the end of last season. Also, like um, very similar. Oh, I yeah. also like the fact that Carrie walks up to him, puts it on, and goes. All right, this is gonna hurt. Yeah. <laughs> Just electrocute the shit out of him. Well, it's not even it's that. It's good. the spike, like the the parts of the crown that are sticking up, like they jam down into his skull. Yeah. Like I don't know if you noticed the pneumatic de- pneumatic devices that pump that into his head. So. No, I didn't see those. <laughs> yeah. Oh my yeah, God. You hear, you hear it like chunk into his head yeah, when they Harry's put it like, on. Yeah, this is probably gonna hurt a little bit. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, uh, back to what Arlen was saying about the mouse. Oh yeah, so it's the same mouse who sings "Slave to Love." I'm pretty sure, <laughs> probably the same model at least, the same CG model. Um, but yeah, it uh, it helps Farouk give everybody their memories back. I, that's how I read that at least. Hold on, hold on. You're, uh, yeah, you're fading into you're fading in and out, sir. Oh, oh Orland's what? dying. <laughs> Is it the internet? I don't feel yeah, so nope, good. Phantom that... Zone podcast. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't. I don't... Mr. Stark, um, am I still, do I still sound weird? There we go. Uh, a little better. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. <laughs> oh, much better. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, what were you saying about the mouse? Oh, the, the mouse uh, that sings to David in the multiple universe episodes. Um, mm-hmm. He gives everybody their memories back. That's, that's how I read that scene. Uh not just yeah, it Sid. seems like Fukuyama sent the mouse to basically do like damage mm-hmm. control. 
Yeah. 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 Um, Although Carrie figures it out because he puts on, he puts on mm-hmm. like he puts on a welder's mask. Yeah. <laughs> it's so yeah. fucking crazy. He, he puts on a welder's mask and like attaches some springs and coils and copper to his like gloves, and then just starts doing like. 1990s virtual reality like <laughs> Jurassic Park like, like Johnny our, Mnemonic our technicians use uh, virtual reality dude. <laughs> god that no that's exactly what it looked like his, yeah. his, his uh, art motion and... sound like shit like you sound like you're what? in a fishbowl wow okay oh, well okay what? and now you're out of it <laughs> I don't I don't understand <laughs> okay uh, I guess I just need to stay right here then I don't yes, know yes you do stop yeah. moving I, 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 um, don't freeze. don't move ever again. Um, yeah, well, that was that was one of the unintentionally or probably completely intentionally funny parts is when Carrie's doing that and then he sees what David did and he's just like betrayal. Well, it's, 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 okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like the setup is like behind him. Uh, other Carrie is like shadow boxing and like fucking pump. She's like, I killed a Minotaur today, and he's like, mm-hmm. Yeah, I saw that. And he's just... <laughs> He's she's like, talking about how it moving, tastes. Like moving his hands like in these fucking weird positions. You don't see what he's doing. And she's mm-hmm. like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm reconstructing what happened in the valley. I'm like, okay, I trust yeah. you. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't yeah, just, what you're doing. Just his delivery of betrayal. Betrayal. <laughs> was so good and so out of left field. <laughs> um, and, and then, then like, uh, I can't kind of remember where we go from here. They so they stick him in that bubble that like. Well, they, yeah. They bring David in under the the idea that they're going to be having the trial for the Shadow King. Right. And yeah. then, oh, oh, it's also noted that like Lenny is going to electric chair. That's what's happening to her. Oh, I didn't get that. I didn't realize that when I was yeah, watching. Yeah, he basically said like, yeah, I'm getting the death penalty. Like, okay. She's, when she's in chains, um, David okay. walks up to her when she's in the truck and says like, um. God has plans for you, and she's like, "I don't believe in God." And he says, "I think you do," and walks away. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, I totally didn't. I totally misinterpreted that. Then. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, and I kind of like, I was like, I had the Wikipedia thing open to read uh, the previous episodes, and mm-hmm. like my eyes kind of glanced down at what was going to happen. I'm like, "Oh, that line has a whole new meaning now." Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> yeah. But like, David is like sauntering around this compound like a conquering hero mm-hmm. like what's his yep. face uh burned face man whose name i constantly forget yeah um he's like yeah. he walks up and get, feeds him such a line he's like good job david you saved us all yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, david, and david goes david goes that's what i do i'm like that, uh, what <laughs> uh yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was um, that was the thing because watching it, it was just it's painful to see that because it's like this is this is terrible what's going on. I don't I don't know what's going to happen, but this does not seem correct. Like no, this just not does not. All. It seems completely out of character for everyone. And, and they then, say that mm-hmm. they say that Baruch will have a trial. Mm-hmm, uh, they'll right. be overseen by Division Thirteen. Oh, excuse me, and Fukuyama. Mm-hmm. Right. So like. This gets set up, uh, and David, David like goes to saunter into this room where the trial is being held, and is immediately detained. <laughs> well, no, not even because he looks over at Sid and Carrie, and like Sid just kind of looks at him and looks away and starts whispering to Carrie, like like a defendant would to their lawyer mm-hmm. when the yeah. when the person on the prosecution comes in, and then things start to get a little weird because the fembots or the the however you want, whatever you want to call them the uh, the fem mustache bots say something on the lines of like you know don't try to resist like this is do not trial. try to resist yeah 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 and it just it goes pear-shaped from there yeah like mm-hmm. this big giant containment field wraps up around david and like i'm pretty sure turrets popped out of the ground too didn't know division yeah. 13 had those like yeah. laser gun turrets like yeah yeah. yeah, and everyone in the room is basically like, "All right, no, the jig is up, David. Like, we're well, kind of on to you now." And that yeah. was it. Was before they even said anything after the or after they said, you know, like you're on trial, whatever. And the the bubble goes up. Then Farouk comes into the room, and you're yeah. like, "Oh, and he's and he's, unde- he's free, he's undetained. Mm-hmm. Like he's got mm-hmm. no shackles on him. Something, the the headpiece uh, is off." Yeah. Eric, What's up, something you forgot to mention was. Something else that the mouse did was it went to it whispered in uh, Sid's ear. Yeah, it did. It it 
crack something open on the uh... <laughs> yeah no it did go whisper something in uh, Sid's ear and we're also forgetting that Farouk forced the uh, well that was how the mouse showed up he forced like yeah. part of the crown to break so he was able to get control of that thing and I think put part of his consciousness in there mm -hmm. but yeah. what the what the mouse said to her I don't know right um, no, no, and it told her it told her what what was really happening well she walks up to david like after he's like all right th th this is funny now t mm -hmm. time to stop now um but then like carrie is one of the first to speak up he's like no we're we're actually trying to help you at this point because you're becoming much more of a problem for yourself um well, and, and sid, sid like sid walks right up to her and right up to me he's like she's like you raped me yeah mm -hmm. and that's when like kind of everything goes like the floor falls out you're like oh no yeah well, yeah. and just the concept they bring up of like, you know, you were you were horribly abused by the Shadow King, you're the world's most powerful mutant, and you're insane. Like you're yeah. all of these things. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, mm -hmm. you, you don't have to be any single one of them. You are all three of them. Yeah, like and they do and they do bring up the fact that like, no, he was a few like the Shadow King's damage has been done. Mm -hmm. And like that's not been wiped clean. However, mm -hmm. there's a whole new set of problems. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, this this yeah. person that's outside of our ability to control is is in a completely delusional world, and, and he's I, showing. I, honestly, I after years of like mutant legislation stories, where it's like it, it mm -hmm. seems it, it always seems like the governing body has the upper hand for some reason, or like Magneto fucking tears apart the Golden Gate whatever that movie's terrible um <laughs> like, it's it's for, it's really cool to see a mutant that no one has a conceivable solution to like mm -hmm. how to deal with mm -hmm. yeah because david yeah. is so fucking next level um, exactly yeah and then like he kind of like you're and then as david's in the sphere like his psychosis takes over again and the multiple davids are in the room with him and now like it's not just this isn't just happening in his head. He is seen in front of all of his colleagues talking to things that are not there. Yep. Yeah. That was that was kind of the part that struck at home. Like, oh, oh no. Yeah. Like this isn't a this isn't a vision. Like he's really reacting to things that aren't there. This is full on schizophrenia. Mm hmm. Um, and and this can't go any place good either. Yeah. Is what that really tells me. And then like he kind of he he kind of he he tries to. He tries to get empathy from people and it's not working. Mm -hmm. And then like and then it th this is my favorite moment of the episode like the the moment where like just the, the snap more or less. Like mm -hmm. David basically puts his hands in the air and goes, "All right, you had your chance. I'm leaving." Yep. And just I'm like, "Oh my god, he just became a bad guy." Like <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. He became the villain. There was yeah. there's also a great moment with uh Farouk. Yeah. Where he mentions what? that that mm. for 30 years oh this, yeah okay he was so... with david and he says the world's my baby mm -hmm. yeah, oh god okay. okay that's a good moment the conversation yeah. they have because david goes to visit farouk and farouk basically calls him on all this shit um mm -hmm. and um farouk is like uh he's like what did david say he's like you have no idea what it means to like try to make someone to, or try to make someone love you or something like that or try to you know earn that kind of love and mm -hmm. farouk is like yeah i do for 30 years i tried on you it didn't work mm -hmm. and like which is just and he turns yeah. around and cries yeah that moment that was uh that was another shocking moment for me because I, yeah. I was hit very hard by that uh yeah. yeah uh and then so yeah in this like in this fucking room like David is starting to display abilities I've never seen him do before. Like they try to gas him, and he's just mm -hmm. like, mm, "No." <laughs> yeah, he just he throws mm -hmm. the gas at other people essentially. Mm -hmm. He blows yeah. up this containment orb, levitates and teleports. Yep. yep. Three, Tele two things mm -hmm. I didn't know he could do. <laughs> yeah, and he teleports to yeah. go save Lenny. And he teleports to go save Lenny, and Lenny goes, "Where's Blondie?" He goes, "There is no more Blondie." Um, yeah. undoes her chains and says, you're going to go for a ride, and then he teleports the two of them away. Yep. And left with 
nothing. Like yeah. there was there yeah. was no like dun 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 or anything. Yeah, like, that. like Sid just... comes in and goes, "What do we do?" And Burnface Man goes, uh, "Pray," because that's all we got left. Like we're yeah. we're, we're screwed. Yeah. I'm I'm curious how season three will end with Albi Praza mm-hmm. going off with the bad guy again, <laughs> because yeah. that's becoming the pattern. Uh, well, I'm her I'm... escaping. I'm wondering though if if as Lou had put it, Force Ghost Amy will um actually take over some of of Lenny's personality because she was showing up here and there in Lenny's mind, like when yeah. they they were sharing the body. So I'm wondering if there's going to be some sort of some sort of disassociation between the two, like that Amy Maybe. will be able to actually take control of her body at some point, and that's going to be one of the cruxes of the next season with Lenny. So mm-hmm. Amy will be the Wolverine to David's dark. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Okay then. Well, this is this is also where I'm I'm thinking four seasons would be the perfect amount. I mean, I know you said five, Arlen, or did you say that, Connor? I said five. Okay. Yeah. Like I I'm think, cool with whatever. <laughs> I think third season is going to be you know the fall of David, and then I thought the fourth season would be the rise and redemption, and then that's that's all you need. Like mm-hmm. I think anything more than that, and it's just it's bordering on on. I, I don't know milking the cow essentially like you're just you're trying to get too much out of it no like, I and think like it's... i think like one of the reasons why i actually end up loving breaking bad so much is because that show like gets done what it needs to get done and then just leaves mm-hmm. like it, it doesn't overstay its yeah. welcome at all yeah yeah, Bye, yeah that's see, something that's, that's worthy it. yeah that's something that's worthy of appreciation and i do think that this show it can have a definitive beginning, middle, and end, and I'm curious to see what they'll do, but I would like them to sort of stamp and end point. Mm-hmm. And, it, and you know what's amazing is that Breaking Bad was on AMC. How you doing, guys? Why don't you end that zombie show already? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, we need Which it. one? <laughs> Be careful, we'll get a Gus prequel, which, not against that, Ow. but... <laughs> Well, and don't forget, we also have Better Call Saul, which technically isn't really Breaking Bad continuing. It's a prequel, but there are elements right. of what's happening to Saul after yeah. everything. So I, I'm hoping they'll put an end point on that too soon, because what, they're on season four now? Yeah, they are on so. season four, but they still have time. They have, they have a lot of time. Yeah. yeah. I just I, want him to go full Saul. Like, yeah. Before the end of this season, would, maybe. Yeah, I'd love to see a little bit of him being full Saul before before uh, before he entered into the life of the kingpins of crime, or at least with mm-hmm. Gus hiring him on once he realizes like what a good shit heel this guy is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. But yeah, like no, I, I don't think a show like Legion can go on too long because I think you like you, you'll you'll stretch this premise to the point where like it's ridiculous now, but it's compelling ridiculous. It's it's, it's almost. Mad- I think they should end it after next season. I think next season should be the end. Um, I'm hmm. the one who I, knows who thinks of, who has a perfect ending idea. I Amy mean, dies. I'd love to hear it. Wolverine yeah. stabs David. What? <laughs> no. God damn it. Just David it. dies Just after getting impaled in the forest. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now, here's what. Here, Wolverine jumps at David, and but he's in full like Weapon X gear. Um, and he's like, he's like, uh, he's like, oh no, they sent me back too soon. <laughs> oh, God, you look so different. Good. How it should have Anyways, ended. Sorry, Lou. No, Go I was ahead. Gonna say, Lou, David. Jesus, Alan. <laughs> David does does what he did or did in Avengers vs X Men, where he just erases himself or undoes his existence. Oh. Hmm. Well, that would be. I can't believe uh, I can't believe you just brought up Avengers for X Men in the show. I'm so angry. Actually, <laughs> cool things that happen in that series. I yeah. fucking hate that series yeah. so much. I'm not saying it's good. I'm just saying there's cool things that happen. I like, mean, I read, I read I read preview issue of the You mean you mean Scott kicking Hope Summers in the ribs? <laughs> Get up, daughter. Yeah. You mean Scott killing Charles? Yeah, that too. Oh yeah, that was Scott that's, that's, that's a good character, guys. He's that's a, great a high, that's a that's a high point for Cyclops. Let me tell you. Yeah. Right, but but Scott was right, guys. Haven't mm. you heard this? I, well, you know the stuff that followed after that in the Bendis run. I actually kind of like Scott Summers. He was an interesting character in that. But anyways, it sucks. I hate him. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's here's the thing. Like, I think 
the world at large has kind of accept the fact that Scott Summers is a piece of shit, including Marvel. Well, he's dead, so yeah. it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah like yeah, dead, dead. Scott. Yeah, he's he'll. I I, well, he's not about dead, but sentence. the teenage version of him is around. But regardless, Eric, have you seen that that panel of Nova of of yes, yeah, young like, Scott wait, Summers? What? I hate everything about that sentence. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fucking great. <laughs> But yeah, I honestly I have no idea where they're gonna go, and I'm kind of glad I have no idea where they're gonna go because uh, I, just, I just want Noah Hawley to do whatever he's gonna do. I mean, yeah, if we knew where they were gonna go, it wouldn't be a Noah Hawley show. <laughs> like, exactly. Like that's the best thing. Like, uh, I know only me and Eric have seen Fargo, but like midway through any of the three seasons, you have no idea where it's going <laughs> whatsoever. No. You well, can't predict the I ending. Mean, just the fact that season two has that whole UFO plot that doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> nothing <laughs> nothing happens with it. I mean but... maybe people maybe people will actually watch it now that you say that, but yeah, yeah it goes now fucking I'm gonna crazy. Watch Fargo too. Damn it. What the I'm fuck? Sorry. Well, but I didn't reveal where, like, you what didn't, the entire you didn't, UFO plot is. No, so, you yeah. didn't reveal all the other, all the other weird supernatural shit in that Does show. Or go have a dragon. No, okay. Here's, I'll, I'll just give you three keywords. Okay, the basement, uh, okay. the motel, and the bowling alley. Uh, those are the three keywords for each season, and just. Well, the third one yeah. faded out, so it's a mystery for everyone. The bowling alley is the third one. Oh. Uh, yes. Yeah. The bowling alley, which is... I'm never getting my uh, dragon. N- I mean, season four. Everyone, every season has a weird supernatural edge to it. Um, which is... Yeah, yeah. Wait, uh, has a supernatural thing to it? Yeah, every yeah. season. And it's all supposed to be the same universe. So you have to like put all the pieces together. But yeah. yeah. First mm-hmm. season, it takes place in ostensibly what's supposed to be modern time. Second takes place <clears throat> in the uh, time period of the father of one of the main characters' time when he was on the police force. And then third mm-hmm. season, I'm not really sure because I f- kind of fell off on that. It's more It's more recent. It's like 2010. Okay. okay. Um, but yeah, like, yeah, things happen. Uh, if you watch season three, pay attention to Ray Wise's character. Um uh yeah things things occur uh and pay attention to the russian character and his arc because wow it goes places uh fargo guys go watch it uh it's pretty great so yeah i mean is there anything else we really want to say about legion i mean i think this was a much stronger season than the first one like that's saying a lot (laughs) like I, they hit everything so well, and I even some of the episodes I was kind of like, eh, about they still fed into what the final outcome was going to be of this season. Uh, I mean, like, I feel like this season had... I, I, I love both seasons probably equally. This season mm-hmm. had a way stronger finale. Yeah, I agree. Way stronger and I, maybe that's maybe that's what I'm getting twisted is that just the the finale was so good that it's making everything else that happened in this season look better under the light of it. But I just I feel like there was better character development for everyone, specifically David, but for everyone else involved in it, like almost everybody got their own episode that was of some note in the show. Yeah. Well, I feel like Legion season one was like, can we do this? And season, Legion season two was like, yeah, we can do this. Season two was like, oh, we're going to do this, motherfucker. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is fucking happening. Yeah. 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 I think that's no, I think that's Holly's, Holly's strategy. It's just yeah. like, first season, let's be laid back and very calm and lure people in. And then mm-hmm. second season, ha 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 ha. Yep. Uh, this is what I am capable of. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's a that's the the Holly rule book for Seems writing so. shows. So yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Hunter's gonna go watch Legion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You need to. I'm sorry. Finish Legion. Yes. Yeah. Fun yeah. too. Okay. Need to. And then watch Fargo. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'll yes. let you watch the version on my YouTube account. I'll, all of you, I'll let all of you watch it if you want. I don't care. So That's yeah, so good. Not the yeah. listeners, of course. I mean, no, fuck all you. Eh, maybe, but <laughs> I love you. Don't don't unsubscribe. I'm sorry. 
Yeah, but uh, uh, hosts, login info. <laughs> hosts <laughs> first, and then maybe. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> like, subscribe um, and give a five star review. Yes. Mm -hmm. So yes. Uh, actually, after the show ends, I've found the website where Ma Phoenix is hosted. Uh, I'm gonna read the whole thing. Uh. <laughs> Wait, who here? Who here hasn't read Ma Phoenix? I haven't. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> you, you'll, you, you'll appreciate it. The you most, brought up Avengers vs. X Men. Someone rewrote all of Avengers. Oh, I saw those. Yeah. Uh, they just replaced, like, basically all the speech bubbles with, like, the most insane dialogue <laughs> you will ever read. Like, yeah. the sequence where Cyclops kicks Hope in the ribs is like, what does he say to her? She's like, she's like, it's like Magneto and someone else were watching down there. It's like, how's it going? Well, I was hoping Cyclops would fight fair, but look what's happening now. And he kicks Hope right in the ribs, and she's like, you kicked me in the kidney, you son of a bitch. He's like, newsflash, Hope, you only need one to live! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I only have one. And oh, oh. I know something else about Alan. <laughs> All right, Alan. Uh, okay. I have been a very uh, lucid Connor McGraw. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, by Wednesday, our Uncle Sam episode of Movie Dumpster should be out. We're releasing on the fourth intentionally. Now you see our master stroke on the ha 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 ha. <laughs> By the way, that movie fucking sucks. <laughs> I just have to get that out there. <laughs> it's probably like the third worst movie I've watched on Movie Dumpster. House of the Dead is still just irreplaceably terrible. Um, but uh, Tetsuo is also out. Gnome the Norm is out. This is probably like the most content heavy like week and a half we've had in a long time because we finally got our fucking shit back together. So uh, I don't know if anybody here listened to the Tetsuo episode, but we had a blast on that one too. I've been saving it. Oh, it's been good. saving it. It's good. I, I save movie dumpster like precious oil, like, <laughs> like a fine wine. I just, I, I'm just like, oh, this is so I, good. It's uh, funny cause, like now Joe picks those. Um, he does this little short, like the VHS filtered videos. Mm -hmm. I was expecting him to do, like, a, he, to pick like one of the like the the folk, the aggressive industrial like tech music. Instead, mm -hmm. he grabbed this like. 1950s guitar lick that's from the movie. Mm -hmm. It's completely out of place. It's like it's like. I was I was wondering where that came from because, like I said it's, before, yeah, it's been it's, a very long time since I've seen that. It's from the fucking movie. It's like something the salary man watches, like in his house before he gets a drill dick. Jesus yeah. Christ. By the way, everyone, that movie has a drill dick. <laughs> yep. <laughs> It certainly does. Yep. <laughs> and a character whose name is quite literally the metal fetishist. <sighs> Damn it, Japan. It's fantastic. Damn. Anyway, who else is here? Um, Arlen Haro here, as usual. Um, Los Haro Podcast every week. Um, I think the episode we're going to be doing is... Uh, the rise of indie directors. So basically, what happens to indie directors is they become, you know, more studio. They become people. Colin Trevorrow. Right. Or Ryan Johnson. Uh, so we're going to oh, yeah. compare Marshall and contrast. Gunn. Right. Or that's yeah. that's a very. I'm going to put that on the list. Uh, but yeah. You so we're going to be talking about that. Director of the greatest right. Star Wars movie ever made. Right, so good that it's getting remade. Didn't you hear about that? It's God. the movie's so nice they had to make it twice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, and uh, I mean, if if anybody listens to this before we record it tomorrow at four, uh, you can be on. So uh, uh, look forward to that. Do it. When you uh, say this tomorrow, I'm working. Yeah, tomorrow at four. I don't expect you to be free, so yeah. Uh, don't else? haul him anywhere. <laughs> Hunter's back to tell you what to stay off his lawn. Get off my lawn. Uh, and I just wanted to add for you, Hunter. Don't, don't be to... shit heels. Yeah, don't be shit heels. Yeah, but join the group though. Join the group. Maybe like you should join the fan zone and not join groups that are run right. by people who like you know mention on the show once or twice. Right? Uh, no, Hunter, remember you made this group so you could just feel sorry for yourself. That's what this yeah, is about, I did. right? That's yep. what I did. That's, mm -hmm. the, I did that's that. the sole purpose of this group. None of us have ever had any had any part in its in its function or its or its day to day operations. 
Well, I'm, I'm personally that, sick of this, this podcast. Sick of every is, update just being how angry Connor is about something, or Connor yeah, Hunt is about something, or sad. Yeah, yeah. 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 This, this show, about... this show is only about Sad Hunter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sad Fuck off. I was about Sad <laughs> Allen. Well, it was for a while. Uh, then we corrected that. Yeah. Uh, it's then still, we corrected it hard. It's still about <laughs> sad Chris whenever he shows up. So. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Did you say Chris? <laughs> he's like he is like our personal race. Like he just kind of he's like a fucking ghost of misery. He just shakes. Hello. His, Hello? Sh- Hello? Shakes his chains in the background. He's like, I like, I created the show. Real part, real part, Ooh, though, but I, I won't admit in, it. In the, in the chat, when he just pops up. <laughs> it's pops so up, good. Like, what the fuck is going on? I'm like, I don't know, Chris, maybe pop up every once every two months. You'll have an idea. <laughs> or or when he pops up, he's like, I could be on. Okay, we're recording this time. Oh, I'm going to be at dinner for the next five hours. <laughs> <laughs> or then you'll see him post and be like, I'm working a 22-hour shift. You're like, what are you? What? Where do you work? <laughs> <laughs> I work in a, we're going we're gonna to salt mine. <laughs> He works at a child labor factory. He's actually only 12. Uh, anyway. This is like the Alan, where I follow Alan. him on Instagram. Oh, God. <laughs> to find out what the hell he does. Good uh, luck, bud. You can follow me on Twitter at the Alamir. Follow me on Instagram at Comics Boy, where I posted some panels from Ultimatum. Yeah. yeah, you have you certainly much did. To, much to the shock and of like the the like offense of several people who don't know what that is. <laughs> like fucking uh, Joshua Van Cruz, shout out. Um, he's like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Loeb, writer of Cliffhanger. And then like I think yes. Ed, Ed's comment recently <laughs> that that one he's put today, he's like, I have a hard time believing people when they tell me the Ultimate books were good. <laughs> He's not wrong. That's the fucking best. I was like, well, you're, yeah, you're, they're right. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, anything else to plug, Alan? Yeah. Uh, the next episode of Smallville Chronicles will be going up right um, now. I, actually, no, it's a good question. I have no idea. Alan just presses a button. <laughs> You're no actually listening to an episode of it right now. You didn't realize that. Well, everybody, this is in the Smallville Chronicles. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We didn't talk about Smallville at all, but, you know, That's you know joke. who we are. Um, I'm Eric Fedorchak. Guys, you're just so fun. sad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we're continuing this bit for about ten people. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Eric underscore Fedor, dogs, cats, food, comics, stuff like that. Around the Phantom Zone. Um, uh, comic stuff, blah, blah, blah. Uh, yeah, just go watch Legion, and if you really enjoyed Legion, go watch Fargo. I, yep. I I implore you to go watch Fargo. The first two seasons, at least, I really enjoyed. I need to try the third one out again. Also, and go watch Twin Peaks. Yes. Yes. And yes. after all that, if you want to loop it all back together, read some of Noah Hawley's fic- fictional work. That's right. He was a novelist before. Oh, uh, so yeah. Oh, yeah. I get my, I, I don't want to read a no. I don't. I don't I like would. reading books, and that does not make me a literate fuck. I just don't have the intention span anymore. Um, I just can't read. I will. <laughs> yeah, my my horrible secret is out. Um, no, uh, I'll I'll fucking read a Noah Hawley book. Yeah. 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 I didn't even know that. That's great. It's good to have in the uh, back burner. Mm-hmm. Uh. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. So go watch Twin Peaks. Fuck X Men. Uh, bye. 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 Hello. Don't be sad. Oh, guys, my life is so miserable. Oh.